Hello there. Well, this week's news dominated by one story, one man, Sir Alex Ferguson. And we've scoured the continent for the best reaction to his resignation. By the way, don't make my mistake of Googling for Fergie Pease off. You get an entirely different story. Wednesday's goodbye, anyway, making the front pages everywhere from Brussels to Bilbao with uh, tearful eulogies all over. Here's Le Quay, for example. Fergie takes a bow. C'est le dernier tango à Carrington. They say a page of history turns inside with our best wishes. Their Manchester correspondent Eric Bilderman, uh, Bob's brother, I think, uh, recounting his first ever meeting with Ferg in which he turned up unshaven and Sir Alex gave him the keys to his office and told him to take a shower, later confiding, don't worry, we both hate the English. <laughs> the Scots. Portugal's Abola, meanwhile, going straight to the heart of the story. Farewell to Sir Alex. The legend who loves Portuguese wine. Yes, that's how I'll remember him as well. A uh, similar inofile note struck by the Gazetta de la Sport. Meanwhile, Sir Stop, their headline on Thursday. And underneath the editorial by one Carlo Ancelotti, who says, I remember bringing him a fine bottle of Ornelay, says Carlo, our eyebrow delicately raised. He was a legend with a capital L because United gave him the time to become one. This should be a lesson for other clubs who act impatiently, and it beats me who Carlo could possibly mean. But now on to another man who loves a good Portuguese wine, Jose Mourinho. As his time in Madrid reaches the bitter end, Mu last weekend attempting to spin his three Champions League semi-final exits in three seasons into some sort of groundbreaking success for the club. Ass responding by pointing out that actually Del Bosque had four semi-finals and went on to win two Champions Leagues. Their headline, rather ironically, Mourinho the semi-finalist. Jose also asked uh, last weekend if he had any regrets from his three years in Madrid, to which he more or less replied, yes, not getting rid of Ica Casillas years ago. Boom! Even Mu's very own attack dog Pepe felt that this was too much, demanding that Mu be more respectful. Mu responding by breaking off all contact with the team. Now, this is a bit of a problem with a Copa del Rey final to come later on this month, so Real Madrid president uh, Florentino Perez made an appeal for 12 days of ceasefire, which went well. On the third day of ceasefire, indeed, Mourinho telling the press, Pepe's frustrated because we've got a 19-year-old that's better than him, and that Casillas won't play again till hell freezes over. Boom! Mourinho, it's another broadside, says Marca. Resign, says Jose. I'm thinking of continuing. Hurrah! Well, the next day, Marca revealed it's now three days since Jose has spoken to his players, but the Chelsea boys, to them he talks. A quote here from John Terry saying he's been in touch with us all the time. Well, if your manager would rather talk to John Terry than you, things really must be wrong. Curious thing, though, is that amidst all of this, Madrid's players went out on Wednesday and won 6-2 against Malaga, with uh, Ronaldo here getting his 200th goal and 197 appearances, while Mu kept his head down, submerged by a barrage of whistles. With Jose now about as popular in Madrid as a, a blood bag, Ass asks, when will the club take the ball by the horns and fire him? Will no one rid us of this turbulent manager? Question that Mu himself, the stubborn one, as Ass now dub him, is probably asking himself. Well, moving on anyway, and uh, we've got some non moo and Fergie news for you too, with the transfer talk, uh, the, the annual Neymar rumours, for example. This time, Real Madrid supposedly offering a world record 120 million euros because they don't want Barca to get their hands on him. Sport, they reckon the Brazilian superstar will say no to Madrid. Uh, El Mundo, meanwhile, have uh, Barcelona to sign Roma defender Marquinhos and Pepe Reina, the man, of course, who famously put a Barcelona shirt on Cesc Fabregas during the last World Cup, and can imagine Cesc trying to take one off him if that deal goes through. Uh, in other market news, in the Gazetta, there's uh, Mario Gomez going to Napoli to replace Cavani, and in build, Uli Hunis going to Aldi to check the temperature of his sausages. He makes them, you know, this, curiously, on the day that Bayern's board were meeting to decide whether to force his resignation. Well, one man whose sausage isn't frozen is Alfredo Di Stefano, who, as you may have seen, announced plans to marry his secretary, a woman 50 years his junior. Ass, though, revealing this week that his five kids in Madrid want to have the courts there rule him non compos mentis. I don't care, says Di Stefano. I've been a widower now for eight years, and that's long enough. Pele, you've been handing out your samples again, haven't you?
Well, we'll finish off uh, this week with Juventus, who've been crowned Italian champions once again. Second straight season, the 29th in all, or the 31st, according to Turin paper Tudor Sport, merrily ignoring the fact they had two taken off them in the Calciopoli scandal. But who's counting? In the Gazetta, they revealed that the club, who also fielded banners, saying 31 on Sunday, are now going to quietly drop their battle to claim those titles back. The paper, uh, anyway, with the headline on Monday, marvellous Juve, they say this was a success celebrated in every square in Italy. They flag up an imminent deal for the Real Madrid striker Higuain, and they say as she sallies forth into Europe, it's time for the old lady to have some jewels again. Indeed so. Well, from a salute to a sir then, to one for a signora, that's where this week's papers come to a close. We'll have more from the press, same time, same place, next Friday. Hopefully, we'll see you then.